Okay, guys, so to get started on my chili, here I have in my hand, I have some Good & Gather organic ground beef. And I'm gonna just put it here in my trusty little strainer. A lot of people might say, oh, we don't wash our ground beef. Well, I mean, it's your kitchen. You could do whatever you like. It's my kitchen and I'm doing what I like to do, which is be clean. You need to clean all that excess, you know, juices from that meat. It may break down the meat a little bit, but it's gonna be clean. And trust me, it's gonna taste way better. I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run it over cold water. You don't run it over, and you even break it down. Even if you break it down, it's fine. It doesn't take away anything from the meat. Yeah, it may look a little mushy, but it's cool. Ain't nothing. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have, I have some apple cider vinegar here. I'm just gonna pour it over it and rinse it out. I don't have any gloves, but my hands are clean. And if you don't put your hands in it, guess what? It's not going to be cleaning the meat. Anyway. But anyhow, I'm going to rinse this off a couple times. I know it looks like nothing when you do this. Some people don't break down the meat. I do. I just get like a spatula and I just do like that. And let all the excess water come out. And then I'm going to go ahead. Rinse it off just one more time. You see, you, do you realize how cleaner the meat looks when you do this? That's because all that blood that's in the meat is taken out. I know. They're going to say, oh, you know, don't do that. You're breaking it down. Oh, well, it's going to taste good anyway. So, I'm going to rinse it off one more time just to get all that excess out of it. And that's fine. And then I'm going to come back and guess what? I'm going to start the cooking process for my chili with cornbread. Guys, this is going to be so delish. Okay? So, here I have my trusty little chopper. Guys, if you don't have one of these then what are you doing? You need to get one, like right away. And I have one onion that I cut in half. And I'm just gonna dice those like so. And of course, that was a bit too much pressure for my little dicer. So that means I have to like split it one more time. But still, what are you guys doing? <laughs> anyway, gonna press the rest of my onion yeah it was too much but you get the drift there's like the best thing ever since cooked food literally have some jalapenos here i'm gonna split that in half like so boom i literally Oh, de-seeded my jalapenos. It did say use two hands, but of course, I'm trying to be like a strong woman and, you know, use one. Anyhow, and here I have some garlic. I have about four. There we go. Nice and diced, sliced and right. Gonna put my other jalapeno down. Like I said, I hope I didn't break it. I did. I used two jalapenos. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna come right back with my. and start my meat for my. cornbread and my chili. Yes. Okay, guys, so here I have my wok. 
And this is a hex clad wok. I'm not getting paid for this, but it's like the best pot ever. My stove is not high heat and I have two tablespoons of olive oil. And so now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add my, my ground beef that I had from earlier. And as you can see, it is very pale. <laughs> and that is because I cleaned it. And that's okay. I'm just going to mix this together. And you just want to stir it until your meat gets really brown. And... It's also fine if you have liquid in it. It's all going to evaporate and do its thing. I literally do it until it's frying out and it turns extremely brown. So you're going to just let this cook out for about, say, 5 to 10 minutes. And also, it's going to... Uh, get a lot of liquid because you clean it and i noticed that when i clean my ground beef a lot of liquid tend to come from it any ground beef even ground turkey and that is okay like i said you just want it to cook and it's gonna evaporate and do its thing and i will be right back Okay, guys, after 15 minutes or so, my liquid has evaporated. And that is exactly what you want to happen. I'm going to go ahead and I am going to add some... I'm going to put my stove on medium-low. And I'm going to add some tomato paste to it. Just like so. And I'm going to stir that around. If you want, you could add some olive oil. Oh, sorry guys. I keep knocking my tripod. I'm going to add some olive oil to this. Just about an extra teaspoon. And guys, like always, I will always add all my recipes in the description. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to add all my chopped veggies that I did earlier. My onion, my jalapenos. And guys, for chili, you like a lot of onions and peppers in your chili. If you don't like jalapenos to, for it to be spicy, you don't have to. And you don't have to use as much spice as I am using. And also, just a tip, if you also feel like there's too much liquid and it's not evaporating on time. You could just strain it out and just put it back on the stove top to cook. You can do that too. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to add my, I have Bush's baked red kidney beans. I'm going to add it to my my chili I have like about two cans and I also have this one from Trader Joe's and FYI I take all of the liquid out of my kidney beans except for the bushes baked bean chili bean with the mild sauce that one you don't have to take it out because you want that sauce to like 
season it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to stir this around. I'm just going to let those onions and peppers cook and flavor that pot. Yes, I know I didn't season it yet. It's coming. Don't worry. I just want the beans to get all the good flavor of the onions and peppers and garlic. And I will turn my stove down just for a few because you just want it to cook, like I said. And I will be right back. Okay, guys, so after about five minutes on low and slow, now it's time to add in my flavors. I'm going to add about four to five tablespoons of chili powder. And I'm going to add also some hot chipotle from Dano's. This has salt in it. It says low sodium, but... Yeah, I don't believe that. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to mix this in. And I'm also going to add this diced tomato and green chili from Rotel. That's going to give it some good flavor. We're going to st start this all in. It's going to be so, so, so good. I'm going to go ahead also and add some more tomato paste. So all in all, I'll probably say about six to seven tablespoons of tomato paste. You can also use the canned tomato paste. I didn't have that one on hand. And I'm going to also add about two to three tablespoons of better than bouillon roast beef base. So I'll say about two tablespoons of that. We're gonna start this all in. And then I'm going to let this cook for a few more minutes, just about, say, five or ten minutes. And then I'm going to come back and I am going to add some beef broth to cook this all in for about one whole hour. One hour, guys, and it will be the best thing you ever have. Okay, guys, so I let this cook for about five minutes just to like all of that nice sauce and seasonings to get incorporated and if you're gonna use beef stock use low sodium and also if you don't want it to be too you know extra you don't have to use a lot i'm using about one and a half cup of beef stock and this is just gonna bring everything together I'm using the good and gotta brand beef broth to me that's like very minimal in sodium and guys this is gonna be so good I'm gonna just turn my heat up just a tad and it's gonna be amazing i'm gonna let this cook low and slow for about also if you have any bay leaf you could add to it i'm gonna let this cook for one hour and guys it's gonna be amazing and also i'm just gonna add some powdered ginger to this just for that extra kick. My daughter likes it spicy. So I'm going to add some more chili. Like I said, you don't have to. Also, if you like it on the milder side, please feel free. But we like it spicy over here. 
So I'm just going to let this do its thing. Cover. I'm going to cover it for like one hour. Let it simmer and do its thing. And then I'll be right back. After one hour, OMG, guys, my chili is looking like everything. It is smelling like everything. Oh, baby. All you need on a good cold winter night is a bowl of chili with some good cornbread. And, baby, you have everything you need. Oh, look at that. Yum. Yum goodness guys. I'm just gonna go ahead plate this up and have it with my cornbread. Oh like my daughter would say, it is bussing, bussing, bussing. <laughs> Listen goodness in a pot. Okay? Okay. So to get started on my cornbread. I am using the honey cornbread from Kruzia, Kruz, whatever, but this brand right here, this is what I'm using. You could use whatever cornbread mix you like. To me, this is like the best. No offense to Jiffy, but this right here is the holy grail of cornbread mix when you're in a rush also i have a original buttermilk cornbread recipe on my youtube channel you could use that as well however i'm in a rush when i'm in a rush <coughs> i do what i have on hand so to get started i am just gonna get my cornbread mix open so, there we go. I can't get it. These things are be so complicated to use. So anyway, before I get started on putting the mix, I'm going to crack my egg. I'm using one large brown egg. And there's a reason why I did my egg first. Because I like to get this thing out of it. Absolutely hate it. It gives the batter like a real fresh scent so if you want to eliminate that be my guest to that i am adding just about a third of a cup of vegetable oil oh and a tip when you're using liquid you use the cups when you're using like flour or whatever else like a, a dry mix you use the little measuring cups literally i know millions of people do this wrong all the time but that's a tip the the liquid always goes in the cup and the dry ingredients goes level in the the other measuring sets and here i have two thirds of a cup of carnation milk i use carnation milk because it tend to give it like a creamier flavor again you could use whatever you have on hand it's a judgment free zone it's your kitchen you could do whatever you like anyway i'm gonna go ahead now and i'm going to add my corn muffin mix and fyi just a tip don't ever over mix your corn muffin yes it's gonna have lumps it's gonna have clumps that is fine don't over mix it it's gonna get dry okay and also if you don't want to use carnation milk you can use a mix of buttermilk and carnation milk it doesn't matter and this is it right here i know you see those little lumps and bumps that's it don't over mix it not because you see the bumps that means you over mix you just let that be. I also have my nonstick pan right here. I'm gonna literally just pour my batter in that pan. And I'm just gonna pour it in. 
if you don't have a nonstick pan like I do, make sure you put some butter and a little bit of flour to dust the pan so it doesn't stick. Or if you have a silicone pan, that works well also. And that's it, guys. If you're going to use two boxes, of course, you know, you double the recipe on the box. So, I'm going to pop this in the oven at 375 degrees for no more than about, say, 27 to 29 minutes max. I would give it 27. 29 is a little bit pushing it, but that's it. Okay, guys, my cornbread is ready. It did just about 20 minutes. I feel like on the box, the oven is a bit too high. So I would say put your oven to about 325, 350. Because, honey, that 375 almost burnt up my cornbread. And I was not with it. So I would say do about 325, 350 max for about 15 to 20 minutes max because this is what it took me and my comrade is not high on the pan because it was a small box and my pan was too large actually it was supposed to be a tad bit smaller but either way it did what it was supposed to do and that is all we need okay so guys i'm gonna go ahead Get my cornbread cool and put it with my chili, baby. Okay. OMG, guys, look at that. Ah, uh, utter perfection, if I say so myself. All you need to top it off with is a tad bit of sour cream. Oh, amazing. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more delicious meal. You know what I say, the food here don't just look good, but it tastes amazing. So guys, you know I had to try my recipe, right? Come on. One big bite. Mm. OMG. Guys, Woo. so good. Now with some cornbread, just the right amount of spice and the right amount of sweet, delish. Mm. This is amazing.